Lee DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, William Holden. Tonight's story, The Sitting Duck. wraps it up. Let's get this plane back to base. All set, Jim? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? Down there in the water. Look, along the coast. You see it? Yeah. Let's go down. Jim, it's one of those new commie jets, a MiG-15. Well, come on. Break out that camera. You don't find MiG-15s floating around loose every day. A United Nations reconnaissance plane spots a communist jet MiG-15 abandoned in shallow waters off the North Korean coast. That was last July, and that's how it all started. There's a lot to this story that can't be told yet, like real names. That's for security reasons. So for now, let's say my name is Frank Connell, Lieutenant U.S. Navy. I'm a skipper of a Navy landing craft dragging its hook in a South Korean harbor. One morning, while I was up on the bridge, two of my crew were standing their usual spit and polish watch on the forecastle. So deal a cards, Pap, and put that tear bucket back in the sobbing locker. You can't win every hand. All right, all right. And knock off beeping about there being no work on this land and craft. What about the loading jobs we finished last week? Action, that's what I want. I saw more action in the ash can patrol than we'll ever see in this cigar box fleet. Deal. When is the Navy going to let us out of this duck pond, anyhow? Pipe down, you're pumping Bill's flush. Machinist mate, Louie Pep, the fighting man from flush. Uh-oh, here comes the skipper. Back home, I run a crane in the junkyard all day long I run a crane. I lift. I dump. So I join the Navy and what do I do? I run a crane. I lift. I dump. It's... Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Connolly. Yes, sir? Uh, don't let me interrupt you. Go on. Well, it wasn't anything, so We were just about to kill some time, a little lacy doozy. Yeah, I know. I assume those gears in the crane are fixed, too. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Yes, sir. I, uh, I guess you, you... Heard what I was saying. I... I did. And you know something? You're right. Just remember this, though. You're not the only one who gets restless. Well, I, I didn't mean anything by it, sir. Believe me, I, I was just shooting a breeze. It's all right. Stow it, Pap. I can't blame you. About the only excitement you can get on this saucer is battling the watch. You said it, Skipper. Uh, anything to that scuttle button we're getting new orders, Mr. Connell? Could be. I just got a signal to report to the Cumberland. The Cumberland? What do the British want with us? That's what I'm going to find out. Meantime, you might as well get on with your game. You guys stand a great watch with a deck of cards. Come in. Captain Fuller. Ah, welcome to the Cumberland, Mr. Connell. We've been expecting you. Uh, Sit down there. This may take some time. Thank you, sir. I dare say you're wondering what sort of assignment this could be. It's not often you find yourself working with the British Navy, eh? The first time, Captain. I think you'll find it interesting. Uh, Mr. Connell, are you familiar with the uh, Kami fighter plane, the MiG-15? No, sir, I've never seen one. You will. And soon, I promise you that. Now, uh... One of our planes sighted the MiG-15, abandoned off the Korean coast. From the photographs that were taken, it looks as if the plane itself is completely intact. Salvage, huh? Well, we've done that kind of work before. Uh, Nothing like this, I think. This particular enemy jet is rated to be better than any fighter plane in the United Nations Command. What happens when we get it out? I notice you say when, Mr. Connell, not if. That's the kind of talk I like to hear. Well, it's just an ordinary salvage job, Captain. This is not an ordinary salvage job. Far from it. The plane is in very shallow water. And the mission can only be accomplished with a shallow draft landing craft such as yours. 
equipped with a loading crane. Here. Take a look at this map. Yes, sir. Here is where we are. Right. Now, follow the west coastline. Further north yet. And we get to Ham John. That's exactly it. That plane is located 100 miles in enemy territory. I see. How close to shore is it? Far too close for comfort. You'll be operating under the very nose of the enemy. Well, Captain, my men and I have been waiting a long time for a mission like this. What happens after we get the plane? Your Air Force and the RAF are pretty excited about this particular one. It'll be the first MiG-15 ever to be captured intact. It goes top priority to Dayton, Ohio, for study at the Wright-Patterson Air Experimental Base. I need not tell you a very critical study. Uh, sounds pretty big, Captain. It is big. Now, here's the plan. My ship will take you up there part of the way, but we can't go in too far and risk running aground. In the meantime, I'll be in touch with you by wireless while you're inshore salvaging the plane. Uh-huh. When do we get started, sir? Tomorrow morning. Can't come too soon for us, Captain. And, uh, oh, uh, another thing, Mr. Connell. You realize, of course, we have only one day to complete this mission. And you've got to consider the tide factor. Possible shore batteries. I'm aware of that, sir. Now, come in. Oh, it's you, Partridge. Good. Uh, they gave me word on the bridge that you wanted to see me, Captain. That's right. This is Lieutenant Connell, Partridge. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Lieutenant Partridge will go with you on this mission, Mr. Connell. He knows that shoreline very well. Good to have you with us, Partridge. Oh, thank you. And I'll see to it that you have additional help for this job. I know of a young Korean naval officer who used to fish those waters. He'll be your navigator and report to you with the others. So, Mr. Connell, you see, I'm taking every precaution. This is a lucky find. We don't want to miss it. Good luck. Thank you. From then on, things happened fast. Working parties came aboard. So did Air Force technicians. And five South Koreans, led by a wiry little officer I'll never forget, Lieutenant Kim Jong. Before long, we got underway and took station on the Cumberland until we reached a point where we were to shove off by ourselves carrying in tow a small Korean launch. No more protection now from the big guns of the flagship as we eased our way through the treacherous shoals of the West Korean coast. The deeper we got into enemy waters, the more quiet everything seemed to get. We moved up along the coastline, slowly, watchfully, our eyes scanning the rocks and woods for signs of the enemy. Skipper? Yes, Jackson. See anything out there? Not yet. You all set with those Air Force men? Oh, yes, sir. What do we need those guys on board for anyway? Did it ever occur to you that maybe a bunch of Air Force technicians might know more than we do when it comes to lifting a plane? We even got South Koreans with a launch yet. Why do we have to tow that thing along for? Well, you can never tell what happens in these waters. Things could get hot. If we get spotted and start to maneuver, we might wind up aground. In that case, that launch will come in handy. Yeah, I see what you mean, Skipper. So I suggest, Jackson, you get on with the Air Force and those South Koreans. Aye, sir, just as you say. And, oh, Jackson. Sir? Here, take my binoculars and keep a bright lookout on that coastline. If you see anything that looks suspicious, sing out. Aye, sir, loud and clear. Okay, on the double. Right. Oh, I'm sorry, Kim. <laughs> That's all right. It's my fault. Hello, Kim. How are we doing? I thought you wanted to know. We are exactly on course. Good. No. There's one expression I'll never get used to, uh, what Jackson said. On the double. How that? <laughs> Strictly shop talk. You uh, been in the Korean Navy very long? Our Navy itself uh, is not very old. How old are you? 23. I've been an officer about a year. Lieutenant Kim Jong, South Korean Navy. Well, Lieutenant, how close are we to our little treasure? Well, it ought to be only a matter of minutes before we start the plane. We've been at it long enough to arrive at something. Uh, you must not expect the impossible. These waters are very tricky. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Smoke? Oh, no, thanks. You know, Kim, looking out there over that coastline, it 
all looked so, well, so peaceful. It was once. It was all different when I was a boy. Skipper! Skipper! There's a plane up there. Here, give me those glasses. There it is. I see it. Yeah, it's, it's up too high. I, I can't make out whether or not it's... Is it one of ours? Wait a minute. There he goes. Let's hope it's one of ours. Okay, Jackson, thanks. Back to your post. Aye, aye, sir. It wasn't one of ours. Well, I suppose there's nothing we can do about it. Mr. Connor, look. Ahead to port. Over there in the water. What? Don't you see it? The plane. It, it's the MiG-15. And there it was. The commie jet. Just waiting for us. Stuck in the mud, her nose three feet deep in water and muck. It lay helpless and useless. But it also looked as though it could still pack an ugly wallop. I knew that Captain Fuller was right. This was no ordinary salvage job. We had to get the lines around it in order to pull it out. But we weren't only fighting weight and mud and water. We were trying to beat the tide. And we didn't have time to waste. Crews got to work. Men pulled and yanked at lines in order to complete the job before the tide swept over the plane and made further work impossible. Move that crane over to left. I see. Jackson, you're up on that line. Bring it underneath the yard to stop it. Up to here, Skipper? No, no, you're still off. Wait a minute. Pap, more slack with that crane. I see. Okay, Jackson, now take it from there. I see. More. More. Hold it, make it fast. Mr. Connell. That's it, Pep. Oh, hello, Kim. I brought you some coffee. Oh, thanks, I can use it. I've... Uh, how's it going? Yeah, slow, much too slow. Ah, that tastes good. By the way, Kim, uh, thanks for lending me your men. Huh. Only four men. It's not much at a time like this. We can use them all. Look at that tide coming in so fast. We... Pep, more slack on that crane. Okay. <laughs> whole rigging set up and working pretty soon, that plane will be right back underwater. Then how do we finish? I wish you'd tell me. Take a look through your glasses over at the shoreline, Kim. Yes. Nothing. Nothing at all. I can't figure it out. There must be a battery somewhere over there. How long can this kind of luck hold? Skipper? Yeah, what is it? Tide's coming up fast. Never mind the tide, Jackson. Just keep at it. Oh, oh, there you are, Connor. I've got something here you should know. What's up, Partridge? Well, I've been on the wireless with Captain Fuller back on the Cumberland. He asked me to relay you a message. Message? Yes, they've sighted an enemy plane. It got away. They, they don't know if we've been spotted or not, but we could be in a bad way. We've been spotted, all right. And we are in a bad way. Tide and it's still rising. In no time, the plane will be submerged. And you're not half done, Connor. Don't I know it? But with the tide coming in, we can't wait to secure these lines completely. The tail rigging isn't finished, but we'll have to take a chance that it'll hold when we try to raise it. Yes. Pap! I said, uh, start the crane. We're going to try a lift. Oh, do you think it'll work, Connor? You only half a rig. You're taking a great risk. We have to risk it, Partridge. There's no other way. Okay, let her go. <laughs> Try it again. Clear the ropes. Get out of the way. Give her all she's got, Pap. She won't take any more. It won't work. There aren't enough lines. Okay, that's enough. Kill it. Well, where do we go from here? Oh, we can't hope to raise that plane until there are more lines in place and a better rig. But we haven't time, Partridge. We've got to get that plane and get back to the Cumberland before dark. Yeah. Difficult enough to get in and out of here during the day. What's your suggestion? Cast off these lines and hightail it back? Well, I suppose there's nothing else to do. We can't go through this all over again. Any minute, some battery is going to open up on us. It's no good, Partridge. I agree with you, old man, but do we have a choice? Wait a minute. So we can't make it in one day. Why don't we make fast these lines to the plane and sweat it out here tonight? We could pick up again tomorrow morning. As what about that North Korean plane you think sighted us? We're a helpless target, you know. We're a sitting duck. But we haven't any choice. That's the way it's got to be. DuPont 
play continues, starring William Holden as Lieutenant Frank Connell, skipper of a United States Navy landing craft. Lieutenant Connell continues his story of the Navy's efforts to salvage a communist-made MiG-15 fighter plane downed and abandoned in North Korean waters. It was a tense, nerve-wracking night. Finally, over in the eastern sky, I could see a faint streak of light. With dawn would come low tide and a chance to continue the salvage operation. This was the dawn that would make us a perfect target for possible enemy planes and shore batteries. I stood watching the shadows on the coast slowly take form. Tall trees, huge boulders, all silent and still and black. Mr. Connell. Huh? Oh, is that you, Kim? Yes. I see you two uh, have been watching the sky. Yes, yes, it'll be light enough to start soon. It's quiet over there, isn't it? Korea was once a very beautiful country. I lived in a quiet mountain village. It was always quiet, just as it is now. When the war came, it was burned to the ground. Today, only a mountain remains. Your village will be there again, Kim. Don't worry. I wonder... Houses alone do not make villages. People can never return. Yeah. You know, Kim, speaking of home, you see that knoll directly in front of us? Yes. There's a spot back where I come from, a lot like that. We used to climb up it when we were kids. Had a big boulder that was flat as a table. And by the time we reached it, we'd... Kim, give me your glasses. What is it? You see something? I could have sworn that I saw it. What is it? On that knoll where that big clump of trees is, I I know I saw something move. There, there it is again. Oh, let me see. So that's where they are. I knew this kind of luck couldn't hold out forever. Could be spotters for sure. The sun, it's coming up at last. Yeah, right out big in the open. What a sideshow this is going to be for the North Koreans. Boy, we've got to work fast. <laughs> Mr. Connell, rig's all set here. Okay, come aboard, Jackson. Hi, sir. All right, Pap, ready on the crane. Ready, sir. Hold it a second. Okay, Jackson. Okay. Right, Pap, let's go. You brought it off this time. Come out. Congratulations. Don't say that. Well, it's going beautiful. I'll believe it when I see that thing on deck here. Skipper, the tail rigging the lights falls. Ha! Fill the train. Fill it, I say. Fill it. Broke. The whole tail rigging shot. What do we do now, Skipper? Get back to it. You'll do the tail rigging again. Again, sir? They'll spot us any minute over there on the beach. Maybe they have already. But you heard me. We'll rig that tail. If we have to stay here until they blast us out of the water. So we set to work again. Every second was getting tighter and tighter. Kim was keeping his binoculars glued to the shore while the rest of us grappled with lines. We made headway, but there was still plenty to do. I went to the radio to report to the Cumberland. Connell to Cumberland. Operation delayed, but we've completed re-rigging our crane. Over. Hold on to Connell. Are you ready to raise the plane? Over. Pretty soon, sir. Over. Can't be too soon. We're standing by for you. We'll be heading out of here the minute we've got the MiG secured, sir. Over and out. All secure now, sir. We can get it going any time you say. Good. Come on. We're bound to make it this time. Well, Mr. Connell. Yes, Kim. See anything? No. But I, I was just thinking, uh, once the plane is raised, uh, it will be much easier, what with all the men around than the plane, to pilot you back to the Cumberland on the launch myself. Uh, I will lead the way. Well, that's not necessary, uh, Kim. But I want to. It, it will be better this way. All right, go ahead. But I'll need your crew until the hoist is done, okay? Uh, I will go aboard the launch now and get ready. All right, Kim, ten minutes should do it. Jackson. You can hoist it aboard any time you say, Skipper. This time I think we're in business. Pap. I said, take it easy this time. Okay, start your crane. Skipper, am I wrong or is it moving? It sure is. 
Yes, this time we've got it. Well, Colonel, looks as if this is it. I thought for a minute you were going to miss the big show, Partridge. Oh. oh, looks very good, I should say. Good. It looks beautiful to me. It's really coming up this time. Shore batteries. I know it. Did you see the splash? Short. 300 yards, I'd say. They're still short. That was no 300 yards. They'll be on us any second here. Left! I see. Hold on that left. All you got. Partridge, radio the Cumberland. Tell him to get on that shore battery and knock it out. Right you are. Let's get out of here, Skipper. Any second, I hope. Hey, where's Kim going in that launch? I didn't give him permission to take off like that. He's heading straight for shore. What's that guy trying to do? He's crazy. He's out of his mind. Look at him go. Right to the line of fire. Well, that's why he was in such a hurry to get in the launch. He hopes he can draw off some of their fire. His plan's working, Skipper. Look, they're after him. Wow, that last was close. Zigzag, Kim. Zigzag. Plane's up, Lieutenant. Okay, set her down. All right, men. Swing her into place. That's it. Pull her to port. Okay, now down. She's down, Lieutenant. Hell a hoist. Make the plane secure. I got through to the Cumberland, Colonel. As soon as they locate that battery, they'll be at it. They'd better be at it pretty quick. Look at that. They're getting closer each time to Kim. Hey, that last was a straddle. Direct hit. I should have known. Jackson. Yes, sir. Get one of those lifeboats down and see what you can do out Sorry, there. Sorry, Colonel. No use now. I'm afraid all we can do is to get out of here and get out fast. Yes. Yes, I guess you're right. I know these waters. I think I can get us through. If it's all right with you, that is. Yeah, Partridge. Go ahead. And... That's the size of it, Captain Fuller. We ran into a few swells on the way back here, shipped a little green water, but none of it damaged the big. Very good, Mr. Connell. In the dispatches of this affair, I'll see that you're mentioned appropriately. Well, thank you, Captain, but there were others. Uh, one, particularly. Yes, I know. Lieutenant Kim Jong. Yes, sir. And Partridge, sir. And the American Air Force technicians. Yes, you Americans, British, South Koreans. Oh, it'll be a full United Nations report. I must admit you were quite an assorted group. Well, Captain, I guess we were an assorted group. But when the chips are down, people who believe in freedom have a way of matching up. That was last July. On October 22nd, the Defense Department in Washington broke the story. An Associated Press dispatch mentioned all the details consistent with security regulations. It was called a daring United Nations Sea Air Force victory that provided the United States with the secrets of the communist-made jets. But the department, also for security reasons, did not release the names of the officers and men who participated. Gentlemen, whoever and wherever you are, well done, and thanks. Our thanks to William Holden and the Cavalcade players for tonight's story, The Sitting Duck. Next week, the star of the DuPont Cavalcade will be Tyrone Power. Our play, The Giant Who Stepped Over the Mountain, is the exciting story of a man who had a chance to create a kingdom for himself in the United States. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, The Sitting Duck, was written by Robert Mason Pollock. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Vores. The program was directed by John Zoller. 
Mr. Holden is currently appearing in the Paramount picture Submarine Command, photographed on DuPont Superior 2 motion picture film by Lionel Linden, ASC. This is Cy Harris speaking. Don't forget next week, our star, Tyrone Power. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Velasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Next, Hollywood Theater stars Richard Basehart on NBC.